let's look at a bit more technical aspect of getting your emails delivered to inboxes. Spam bots in an attempt to get users to open their emails are known to try to impersonate real people or organizations. A phishing email sent uh, from these with a request for donations is much more likely to bring money than the very same email sent from this email. To prevent that, ISPs implement several types of email authentication techniques to ensure the email organizer is real. It's quite easy to pass them if you are a legit email sender, so definitely invest a bit of time into this. What is an SPF record and why do you need to set it? Sender Policy Framework, which is SPF, is a security mechanism that informs your prospects that the message you sent is safe and you are a trustworthy sender. SPF authenticates your domain and therefore protects your domain's good reputation. An SPF record looks like this. Here you can see where we SPF version always takes the value. IP4, IP address from which sending emails is allowed. Dash all mechanism for working with letters sent from other IP addresses. This SPF record is simple and very strict. It allows sending emails only from the specified IP. All other messages should be blocked as the dash all mechanism is specified. How an SPF record works. After the message is sent, the recipient's mail server checks which IP addresses the message came from. He checks it against the list that is written in the SPF. If the address is on the list, then everything is in order. The letter goes into the inbox. If the IP address is not in the list, then the email may be blocked by the mail provider. But if the SPF is not registered, there is a high probability that the letter will be delivered. And then scammers can easily write a message on your behalf and steal the personal data of subscribers. What is an SPF record for? The main protection from spoofing. The main reason to set up SPF is to keep your domain secure. Sometimes scammers send letters on behalf of another company or person disguise themselves as well-known brand, send messages from the bank about the transfer of funds and ask to follow the link. They do it to steal user data, money from a card, or to plant a virus program on a computer. A scheme in which the sender of an email tries to impersonate someone else uses someone else's logger and a similar email address is called a spoofing attack. To protect corporate mail and domain from blocking and your subscribers from fraudsters, you need to configure SPF. Then the substitution of the sender will be less scary. Delivery of letters to the inbox. Mail providers are loyal to senders who have set up email authentication, including SPF. Mailers are more likely to miss letters from such companies in the inbox. Additional features. If you have added an SPF record, you will be able to connect advanced statistics services to send mailings postmasters. True, for this you still need to configure DKIM. What is DKIM and how to set up it? Domain Keys Identified Mail is a way to authenticate and protect your domain. DKIM helps to safely deliver your messages to your prospects. DKIM is an email verification technology that can be used to detect fake emails. DKIM adds a digital signature to the email. Thanks to it, mail providers can check that the message was sent from the specified domain. A DKIM signature is a TXT record that is added to the site's DNS zone settings. Looks like this, where V is DKIM version, always takes the value, K, key type, and P, unique code that can be generated in the mailing service. Why do you need a DKIM signature? Protects from scammers. A DKIM signature will prevent spammers from sending emails on your behalf. Together with SPF and DMARC, this technology will protect your subscribers from fraudsters, including identity theft. Increases deliverability. 
DKIM improves domain reputation. Using DKIM, the receiving server determines authenticity of the sender and its overall rating. Emails with a good reputation are more likely to end up in the inbox. DKIM works like an ID. You present it to the mail provider and it lets you into the inbox. Gives access to postmasters. Postmasters are mail services for mailing analytics. They help track deliverability, opens, unsubscribes, and spam complaints. To enable statistics in the Postmaster, you must have email authentication configured. DKM is one of the components of email authentication. How DKM works? DKM works like this. The letter contains encrypted data about who and when the letter was sent. The mail provider receives this data along with the letter. The provider decrypts them using the public key posted on the domain from which the letter was sent. If the data matches, then this is an honest sender, the letter can be skipped to the inbox. If not, it is a scammer, the letter goes to spam. What is DMARC? DMARC domain-based message authentication reporting and conformance it is a policy to protect users from spam and phishing emails. Why is a DMARC policy needed? DMARC allows you to resist phishing, fraud, the purpose of which is to steal confidential user data such as logins, passwords, credit card information. The main phishing tool is email letters. Typically, attackers disguise their messages as messages from well-known companies using their domains. If the user follows the instructions from such a letter, he loses personal data and often money. And the company suffers significant reputation damage. If the company has DMARC configured, then the email sent by scammers on its behalf will either not be delivered at all or will be marked as suspicious. How DMARC works? DMARC is a protocol that tells the server what to do with the message if the DKIM and SPF records are incorrect. Correct DKIM and SPF confirm that the email was sent from the domain specified in the from field in the email. Thus, DMARC along with SPF and DKIM is responsible for mail authentication, that is, for the sender authentication procedure. Let's see how these records differ. DKIM works like this. The letter contains encrypted data about who and when the letter was sent. The mail provider receives this data along with the letter. The provider decrypts them using the public key posted on the domain from which the letter was sent. If the data matches, then this is an honest sender and the letter can be skipped to the inbox. If not, it is a scammer, the letter goes to spam. SPF indicates whether a particular server is allowed to send emails from that domain. The server is identified by its IP address. For example, when you send a campaign using a cold mailing service or set up corporate mail, you delegate the providers and services servers the right to send emails from your domain. SPF detects a trusted sender by IP. Now let's deal with DMARC. This entry tells the mail provider what to do with the message depending on the results of reading DKM and SPF and tells the server to send a report to the mail of the domain administrator, that is you or your system administrator, which with information about what letters were sent and how the provider dealt with the letters. How the provider checks email based on DMARC settings. After your email is received by the recipient's provider, it checks the reputation of the domain, the presence of the email and the domain in the blacklists, the IP addresses of the servers from which the email was sent. As part of this check, the mail provider decrypts and verifies DKIM. Is the letter sent from this domain exactly or is it a fake? Decrypts and verifies SPF. Is it allowed to send emails on behalf of this domain to this IP? Applies the policy specified in DMARC. Let's say DMARC says to spam those whose DKIM does not match and send a report about it to the domain administrator. And next, standard spam filters are applied to the message. 
options for the development of events after verification. The latter is skipped and ends up in the inbox. If DKM and SPF are OK and spam filters are passed, the message has been quarantined. In spam, if DKM does not match and or spam filters are not passed, the latter was rejected or not delivered individual reasons, for example, the user's mailbox is full. After distribution of letters, an automatic report is sent to the sender which says what happened to the sent letters. How to set up DMARC? Go to your website's hosting control panel, find DNS records management in the settings, enter a new DMARC TXT record, a TXT record is a type of DNS record in text format that tells external sources what to do. We have uh, listed the most common in this video and uh, in uh, resources. You can copy the entry from there and save your changes. What to write in DMARC settings? DMARC tags are either required or optional. The required ones are V equals DMARC1 and P equals with the policy value. Here you can see the example where V equals DMARC1, version of DMARC protocol must be one. The record allows the provider to recognize that it is this TXT record that defines the DMARC policy. If this parameter does not come first in the entry, DMARC is not recognized. And P is the requested mail uh, receiver policy, that is what exactly to do with the letter if DKIM did not pass the check. A policy can have three values, P equals noun, which uh, take no special action or everything is at the description of the mail provider, P equals quarantine, send to spam, P equals rejected, do not accept the letter. In addition to the required text, you can specify additional ones. They will indicate which reports and where to send or what percentage of emails to apply the policy to. The additional text and their description you will find in resources section for this video.